I'm just going to start right into it, if that's okay with you guys. Yeah. When I was eight years old, my mom dressed me in my Sunday best, and I remember it was a really colorful, flowery dress, and it was my favorite dress. My mom packed me in the car and took me to the doctor's office because she wanted me to be tested for giftedness. You see, I wanted to be a doctor when I grew up, but there weren't many representations of black women doctors in the 70s. So my fierce mom wanted to do her best, and she wanted to give me any kind of a leg up that she could possibly give me. So we went to the doctor's office, and she explained to him her reasons why she thought that I was gifted. And he thought about it, and he looked at me, and he knew me well. And he said, you know, I have an interest in neuroscience. And I think your daughter might have something called Asperger's. And he used words like disorder and social challenges and communication challenges. And I don't really know how much my mom understood at that time, but she made a decision that day that changed like the rest of my life. <coughs> we went out to the parking lot and I remember her getting down on my level. And she said to me, you, are very, very bright, and nothing is ever going to change that. But we will never talk about this appointment again. We will not talk to your father, or to your brothers, or to your sister about this. I felt deep shame. I wasn't sure what I did wrong, but I knew that I hurt my mom in some way, and I wasn't sure how to fix it. So I did what I thought was best. I never talked about it. Years went by, and I rarely thought about that day. I didn't want to hurt Mom. She was a hard-working woman, and she'd come home from work, tired, and she'd get into her moo dress, which had flowers on it, which was her favorite, and she'd make herself a cup of tea and sit down, and that was her joy. But I tell you what, any time I put on the Elvis record and I dropped the pin, Mom couldn't help herself. She would wiggle a little, She'd jiggle a little, she'd giggle a little, and she'd sashay into our living room, and we would have ourselves a good old-fashioned dance-off. And that was my mom. She was a phenomenal woman. When I think back, I know now why the teachers and my family missed the fact that I had Asperger's, or what we now know is under the autism spectrum condition spectrum. It wasn't easy to catch it, especially in my case. I wasn't showing the usual social challenges and communication challenges. And because we're female, a lot of times we get passed in the diagnosis because we present differently than males. So I could see possibly why I wasn't really fitting into the understanding of ASC. But there were signs. I had repetitive behavior. And I remember a time in 1979, my friend Stacy Berghauser was having her 10th birthday party. And it was the 70s, so it was a disco party. And she invited her friends, and she invited her family, and her extended family. And we were having a great dance-off, and Stacy excitedly went up to her family and said, This is TC. She taught me how to do the hustle. And so that was it. They brought everybody into the living room, they cleared the center, and Stacy and I did the hustle together. And there was a lot of clapping, and lots of noise, and lots of laughter, and more laughter, and more laughter. And my 10-year-old self wasn't really sure if they were laughing with us, or if they were laughing at us. As soon as the hustle was done, I made some excuse, and I ran out of Stacy Berghauser's place, and I never went back. I was embarrassed, and I felt stupid, and I had a heavy helping of anxiety and self-loathing. I didn't know then, but my 10-year-old self wasn't really sure how to understand this social cue. In February 25th, 2014, Mom died of cancer. I was flying home that day from working with an organizational client in Edmonton. I would just landed, and I'd gone to the mall to buy my mom a dress, what I knew would probably be her last dress. And I got the call from Dad, and I was in the mall, and I was devastated. I was really sad for my family. I was really crushed for me. But I was relieved for my mom, because finally she was free. I wasn't sure what to make of it. And after a couple of years, I started to think about my life again and take stock of it. 
And somewhere I remembered that day at the doctor's office. And I thought to myself, could the doctor have been right? Could I have had Asperger's or autism? And then I looked at my beautiful daughter's life, Sunshine, and I thought, could Sunshine have had autism this whole time and I'd missed all the clues? So I decided that it was probably time for a diagnosis. And the reason for that was when I saw Sunshine's life in hindsight, I remember when she was eight years old, there was a clue then. She went to play with her best friends, friends that she'd known since she was three. Basically, she'd known them almost all her life, and she was having really bad social anxiety. And I looked at her and I thought at that time, hmm, I wonder if this is normal. And then I remember a time when she was 10. We were in the dentist's office, and the waiting room was packed with people. The sound was really low, but then they put a song on. And my daughter and I clapped our hands over our ears. We couldn't handle it. We had a sensory reaction to a high-pitched sound that was in the song itself. And I looked around and no one else was having this reaction. And I think somewhere deep inside, I put that away in my heart and in my mind, maybe to be discovered at a future time, that maybe there were signs. So I decided it was time for diagnosis. I phoned and interviewed many psychologists across British Columbia, where I live, and I asked them just one question. Have you ever diagnosed an older black woman? You see, I was 48 at this point, and I'd been masking for a long time and masking very well, so I knew I was not going to be an easy case. I found one doctor, and he and I were together, and on May 17, 2017, I was officially diagnosed. I was relieved for myself. I was very sad for the little girl who was asked to keep this a secret, and I was devastated for the child who tried to be a typical normal child and failed year after year, moment after moment, experience after experience. And then I looked at my daughter Sunshine's life and I thought, what does this mean? What does my diagnosis mean? What does it mean to her? Sunshine inspired me. She inspired me. At 18 years old, my daughter Sunshine moved to England and got a law degree on scholarship. And by the time she was 22 years old, she graduated at Radbag University in the Netherlands with a Master's in Human Rights Law. And my daughter taught me that autism is not a diagnosis with a period at the end. Autism is being open to all the gifts that the spectrum can give you. Now, it's been two years since I've been diagnosed, and in that time, I've tried to stay busy. I co-founded a not-for-profit for neurodiverse individuals all around the world. I've written academic papers on autism and higher education, and I sit on the board of the scientific journal Autism and Adulthood. I'm trying desperately to spend the rest of my life working to make sure that my community is well taken care of and well spoken for and has a voice. But really, I'm thinking about my mom. And I'm thinking about why she did what she did. And I fully understand why she did what she did now. She was protecting me like a mother bear. She knew it was going to be tough enough to be a black woman in the world. But how much tougher would it have been if I was a black woman with a neurodiverse condition? She had no idea, but she wasn't going to take a chance. And I love her for it. Two months ago, I turned 50. And now, I have high social anxiety, as does my daughter, and this is something that's on our corner of the spectrum is very, very difficult. Being in front of you, for example, is very difficult for me right now. But I decided I was going to have a party. And I invited all the people whom I loved, and I wanted them to know that this party was for them. I wanted the people who came around and knew me when I was 20 and masking, and support me and love me now, coming out as an autistic woman. I wanted them to know that I loved them. And at one point in the night, the band had to cheer for me and said, let's wish TC a happy 50th birthday. And I stood there, and I looked at my daughter Sunshine, who I was trying to give all the self-love that I could possibly give to her, so she knew that she was going to be okay as an autistic person. And to my husband, Dean, 
and all our friends were standing around with drinks in their hand. And I stood there in this red duster and velvet jacket, which is my favorite. And I thought, this is my coming out party. This is me coming out as a 50-year-old black, fierce woman, soon to be a doctor, proud to be autistic. Thank you.